Go right ahead. Tell okay. Story. My name is Jason Simpson. Um, I'm from Norman, Oklahoma. I've been a police officer there for uh, just about 14 years and started investing in real estate probably about 10 years or so ago. Um, I think the first course that I listened to was Ron's. I've served on the board of directors for the Oklahoma City Real Estate Investors Association for about eight years. I was their spokesperson, the kind of person that would come and speak to the group, the guy in front of everybody. Um, dealt with a lot of speakers and a lot of trainers, um, and every single one that I've dealt with was trained by Ron. They were all great trainers, but this guy is the best. I will tell you, you know, every single thing that you're learning here is, it, it works if you do it. And what's funny is you'll still see people in here that you're thinking, there's no way that this person could do a deal. You're wrong. You are absolutely dead wrong. Um, I've seen people that I'm thinking, how in the heck are they going to even do a deal? And they do it. And it's and, and what's great about that is because you can look at them and you can say, okay, if this person can do it, then by God, I can do it. That's, that's and, really true. Oh, it is. It's and and, and I love that. Um, so. Been a cop for 14 years. I uh, had a uh, had a bankruptcy through all the, the midst of it, and within uh, after within three years after the bankruptcy, me and my wife Tracy had uh, purchased 14 houses um, with none of our own money or credit because we didn't have any. Um, of course, we did some stupid stuff and didn't and, and and you know signed on the dotted line with banks, but when it crashed. We ended up, what happened was um, on night shift, well I was on, on days and then I had radio commercials going and stuff in Oklahoma City, that kind of thing, had some good marketing, it was really starting to ramp up and I'll tell you, people get jealous and especially people that you're working with and that, that's kind of what happened to me. Um, some of my supervisors, uh, I got forced to move to night shift and there are some guys that work night shift for, you know, 20 years just fine, and you know that their bodies are attuned to it. Mine, it wasn't. The city was paying probably, you know, $1,700 a month on pills to keep me awake and pills for me to sleep, and they would rather do that than, you know, change me to a different shift. Did they know they were paying for these pills? They did because they had to approve it, but they couldn't say no because if. Um, if they said no and I fell asleep and ran into somebody, then their liability goes. No, that was, yeah. These were legal bills, right? Yes, yes. they were legal. <laughs> you know, it's not something I wanted to have to yeah. take, but you know, I got to stay awake if I'm going to be driving at 4 a.m. Um, so, got really tired. Um, real estate, I couldn't couldn't focus. I just had absolutely no energy whatsoever, um, and that's about the time that the market crashed. Um, we ended up selling all of our properties. Good thing we bought right because we were able to sell. We didn't, you know, make as much as we had anticipated to, but it's, you know, everybody that was investing at that point, you know what happens when, when the market crashes, you've got to adapt right. to it. So, um, I was working and um, September 19th, 2012, um, I didn't know it, but it would be my last day as a cop. Um, I was asked to um, walk an intersection. There were some officers that were off duty, or they were on duty, that were working a, um, a wreck, and it was on a highway exit ramp, I-35, main, so it was a main exit ramp. I was asked to, uh, I had to shut down the exit ramp, it was 11.30 at night, I was sitting in my patrol car, I was writing a report, and I looked in the rear view mirror, and I saw a, I saw lights coming, and I could tell that they were not going to slow down. And, you know, I had a couple choices, just stay where I'm at in the car, or get out. And I stayed in the car, because if I'd gotten out, then I would, you know, I, I don't know, that, that I had protection. Um, drunk driver ran into me at full speed, 60, 70 miles an hour, um, and 
everything went to the hospital, everything looked like he was fine because he was drunk. If I'd have been drunk too, I'd have probably been fine because I'd have been relaxed. But uh, I, you know, I was I look in the rearview mirror and as I'm telling myself not to tense up, you know, I'm tensing up. And, and that didn't help anything. Um, the city, of course, after the initial treatment at the hospital, they sent me to, um, the, to their doctor, which was a physician's assistant that was, you know, the work comp person. And after about eight months of physical therapy and um, injections and steroid injection, you know, all sorts of stuff. Um, they finally, I, I finally had to get an attorney to go and uh, to see a neurosurgeon. Uh, they took it to court. They said, okay, yeah, you need to, you absolutely should have seen a neurosurgeon. The, uh, the neurosurgeon said, man, you're lucky to be alive. And um, I th said, you know, with, with that kind of impact, he did tests that probably should have been done way before then. Since then, I've, you can see I've got a scar here. I've got uh, two discs replaced in my neck. Um, just found out today, about 20 minutes ago, I got the call from the neurosurgeon that my bone density is good enough to where I, I can get, a re I'm going to need a replacement disc in my lower back, um, which... Let's get to the end of this okay. before the day's over. So, um, so they retired me. At the one year mark, they forced retired me, and I'm on work comp. And, you know, so things have been really challenging, but one of the exciting things is coming here to meet Ron. And that, you know, I know a lot about real estate. I've never met Ron, never been able to get a chance to come to any of his events. And so, you know, one of, the main thing I wanted to do was, you know, come and learn from him and get to meet him. And, you know, my son got to meet him yesterday. That was a, that was a cool treat for him. So, is your wife here? She's she's with the kids. She's she's out with the kids, taking them around. All right, All right. so you're uh, retired now. I'm retired. They're giving you enough to buy groceries. Yeah, I get seven hundred and seventy-one dollars a week, and I'm officially not allowed to work until this is all taken care of. I like, I like of. that because we don't want to work. Anymore. Absolutely. We just want to make money, right? Yes, absolutely. Okay, uh, Brian and Lynette, could you come up here just a second? Um, I want to do something for you, Jason. And here's what I want to do for you. I want uh, this couple right here to work with you for the next six months in our mentoring program at absolutely no cost to you. Yeah. 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 You start out there actually doing the deals that I know you're capable of doing and raising your expectations, getting higher priced houses. I want a pile of letters from you, and we are going to send them to your boss that you used to work for. <laughs> awesome. When we're done, and tell him we appreciate all of the efforts. No, no, we're not going to do that. <laughs> wow. So, so uh, I want you to get signed up with them. And uh, actually, they're probably full right now. But whenever they can get through you, I want them to start working. With them. All right. Well, uh, I appreciate it. Thank, Thank you so much. Love. And I want to meet you. Love. All right. All right. Thank you.